Good morning, everyone. This is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct, and I'm here on Technique Tuesday, and I'm finishing up my baby surprise jacket. And it has been so much fun. And the thing that I love about this baby surprise jacket, and this is the book that I bought, is by it's by Elizabeth Zimmerman, and it teaches you how to knit a little bit differently. So when you knit this little jacket here, it doesn't look like a sweater until it's nearly together and then you fold it in a certain way and it makes your little jacket. So here's my jacket. It doesn't have the buttons on it and I haven't seen the other shoulder. This one shoulder I have seen and let's see if I can show you. It's still, um, this is the applied eye cord bind off and I wanted to talk about it today because it's a great way to take two edges of garter stitch and put them together and have that nice kind of this uh, decorative detail on the top of your sweater and it makes it very structured and um, nice looking. So it'll lay nice on the baby's um, shoulders. Lots so I thought that was pretty online, cool. So the whole thing again? Yes, yeah. okay, so I, it's kind of hard to hold because I'm still trying to get it sewn the button sewn on i was looking through my button supply and i didn't have quite enough i wanted to use six buttons on this and so i need to go shopping and get some more buttons and so i'll have to look downstairs and see what we have down there but this is using the lovely simplicity yarn and it's by haiku and what it is it is a wool acrylic blend and let me show you it comes in an extra large skein like this and it's machine washable and it is very soft, no itch to it at all. And you see the long color changes. So on mine, you can see that I have some color changes on here. And what I did is when I was knitting with it, if I wanted the change to be an abrupt change, like right in here, or when I switch from that light color back to the darker color, I just, instead of knitting from the inside, I pulled from the outside. And then, so when I wanted a abrupt change, I just took the yarn from whichever part I was not knitting from and just changed the color. And and that is what makes those baby surprise jackets really cute, is that abrupt color change. And I'm doing mine in neutrals because I wanted to have, um, mommy wanted a sweater that she can hand down from if it's a little boy or a little girl. So on mine, I kind of chose a little bit of boyish colors, but then when I did my buttonholes, I did it for a girl. <laughs> So this is truly a universal little baby sweater, and I haven't decided what I'm going to do around the neck collar yet, but I am um, going to pick out the buttons today, and this right here is a three-stitch I-cord on it, so it's a little bit thick. So when I show you how easy it is to do, I wanted to do a two-stitch. I haven't tried it yet, but I thought we could try it live on air so you can see which one you like better and then i wanted to talk about a few little points that it doesn't tell you about in the pattern also when i did my um applied i cord in the pattern it tells you to knit one slip one pass the slip stitch over and instead of doing that i did an ssk because um i uh, saw that online and i thought it was a little easier so that's what i did with mine and i think it turned out nice Where's so that? <clears throat> on the applied I cord bind off. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, and it looks good on both sides. So, and so, um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna, I'm gonna, that's the skill I wanted to uh, talk about and show you how easy. Cause I was, when I looked at it, I'm like, oh boy, this could be hard, but no, it really isn't. It's like, if you can do a regular I cord, you can do this. You can seam together using the I cord bind off and do that decorative. Um, stitch on your work too. What were you going to say, Jim? Said lots of people coming online. Good morning, Coast, everyone. And Alaska, don't forget, every Wyoming. week we have prizes. And for this last week, it was for Adria, Phil, Nick, Cole. And this is a Plymouth uh, yarn that is a let, let me tell you what it is. It's I think it's 100% superwash merino. I've used it lots of times. Where is it on here? Okay, I know it's made in Italy. Oh, yes. See? 100% superwash merino. And don't forget, as we're going along, to let us know where you're from. 
And if you get a chance and you're working on something that's really cool, like a lot of our VIP members are working on some beautiful projects, um, go ahead and post those in the, the comment section and I'll take a look at those and I might get ideas for future knitting projects and you guys might get ideas from each other. And don't forget to share this with your friends so we can all learn together and improve our knitting skills and um, learn together as we're going on. Maybe, um, as I'm going along, I'm talking about all these things and you come up with, the, you think of a new idea. Some, maybe I mentioned something a little differently and you're like, oh, I could do that. And that's what I like. I like to be able to spark your creativity and get you to try something and use it a little differently. Like this sweater. That's what I love about it because it is not your traditional sweater. It just looks like, I don't know, it looks like regular knitting, right, Jim? Mm -hmm. It looked like a flat piece of work until you, with warped, uh, sections in here where you did increases and then decreases and so um yeah but then you put it all together and voila it makes a cute little baby sweater i said where's the surprise that's the surprise you're knitting along and you're like this couldn't possibly be a sweater and guess what it is <laughs> it's totally fantastic and so um when i did mine i was following this schoolhouse press pattern and you said that the um the People who do this, it's the daughter of Elizabeth Zimmerman's, right? Mm -hmm. So um, this is the actual written pattern. And this is the one that I followed for a couple of reasons, because it has actual stitch counts and actual um, um, numbers to cast on. This one gives you one set, like 160 stitches that you can cast on, but it doesn't, it shows you the math about how to create your own um, stitch counts and everything. But um, um, it has more theory behind why she created what she created. And it has like how you can do a surprise jacket using color work and adult surprise jackets and all different kinds of things. So um, this one is more theory, but this is the pattern that I used. However, when I was knitting this pattern, I did find that I had to go along um, and not just use, there's, there's kind of like this is one part of the pattern and then there's written instructions too. So I had to kind of refer back and forth because um, you kind of have to um, think outside the box to follow it because sometimes it doesn't give you all the information and don't forget to read through the whole pattern before you start it because otherwise you'll be knitting along because it tells you to go ahead and start your um your decreasing or increasing whatever it is that you're working on for a number of times but then down in asterisks it'll tell you different directions that you're supposed to add to it. So if you don't read the whole thing, you might be knitting it twice. <laughs> and when I did mine, I didn't slip um, the edge stitches. I When I um, did this jacket, you'll see that I didn't, uh, I have the uh, just regular knitting on the edges. Oops, and I also knit a hair into it. No, it looked like my hair. But anyways, it's all good. But it was a fun project. And if I had to use this uh, simply um, simplicity spray again, I would use it for this ja um, the jacket. I thought it was a great yarn. And let me see how much I have left. See, there's still quite a bit left. And so that I could probably do either a hat or a pair of mittens or maybe a pair of mittens and a pair of booties. It has still quite a bit of yarn left in there. So I'm going to use it all up on this project so that I, you know how I am, I don't like to waste. So I will make stuff to go with it right to the bitter end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's see here. Don't forget our contest. This week, I was thinking for the contest this week, don't you think it's appropriate that we offer the um, Simplicity Spray and this color called Girly, um, the one on your left and the one on your right is, this one is Pebble. And so you choose which one you think the winner would like and we can get that out in the mail to them next week. And how we do that is the winner, we announce it on our, um, you know, toward the end of our little project here. And then um, we, all you have to do is get in contact with customer service and then we get your address and send it out in the mail. So you guys let me know which colors you like. And another reason why I like you guys voting is that it gives me an idea about what colors you're enjoying so that when I'm doing our lovely knit club, 
I can choose colors that you might like. And so, what are and they so, voting on? What colors? Um, one is called girly, and this one's called pebble. Girly or pebble? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, it's fantastic yarn, and um, it did great for the. It did most of the striping for me a couple of times. I, um, you know, changed from what um, end I was knitting from from the inside or the outside, and that made the abrupt color changes that I like, like these little stripes right in here, which I thought were cute. So this is gonna be a cute little sweater when I get it done, I'm excited about that. That was fun to make, and it was quite content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a great little project. Um, let's do something real quick, and we're gonna take a look at our, um, the I applied I-cord bind off. So, when you do an I-cord bind off, um, see this is the three stitch I-cord bind off and I want to just, now I haven't um, tidied up the edges and finished it, but do you see how it's kind of thick? It's a three stitch I-cord bind off, not a two stitch. And this is what it looks like on the other side. So the things that I was thinking about when I'm doing this, first of all, when I'm doing this applied I-cord bind off, use double pointed needles it's much easier so that's what i'm using on mine and then i knit this with the number five needle but i did my i cord with the number six just so it doesn't get too tight i want it to be squishy on top so i did that just because i tend to be a tighter knitter and i just thought that would be a good idea it's totally up to you and also when i'm doing the i cord i went from my right hand side over to here to the left hand corner and now i'm starting from over here to here i am not going to turn it back to the sleeves and do it on this other side because my i cord might look a little differently i'm if i had this on the front instead of this on the front it would look different on both sides so when you're doing your i cord um, apply the I cord bind off, make sure that you're doing it. If you're doing it right to left on one sleeve, you do it right to left on other sleeve. And then what I, another thing you had to consider is you count all these garter ridges and I had 30 garter ridges. So I count back here on my stitches and I put a stitch marker at, um, see this is um, marking the 30th stitch so that when I start, I know exactly where to start so that everything lines up nicely. Okay. And so that's, those are the two things that I did before I started. Now on here, let me see if I can just do this again. So I am just going to, when you do the I cord, you have to, I'm going to do the two stitch I cord. So I'm going to cast on two stitches, right? And then what you do is you go right, I, when I'm doing mine, I'm gonna pick up that bar right there, and then I'm gonna pick up this. I'm kind of going through under two strands there, um, but that seemed to work really nicely for me last time, so oops. So I'm gonna do that again. And then once I get one stitch done, I'll take that little light bulb stitch marker off there. And so then once I have, I've taken one stitch from each side on there, then I do like I would a normal I cord. So you keep the work right there and then you would knit one. And then what I did, um, I like to do the SSK. So I would slip one as if to knit, slip another stitch as if to knit, and then knit those two stitches through the back loop. Okay, and then, oops, I got a little strand of yarn on there. And then on this next one, I grab the same bar every single time. So I'm gonna grab this bar, that bar, that bar, and so forth. So you can see that I'm grabbing it from the same spot. That's what makes your work very uniform. It doesn't matter exactly how you do it, how you grab the stitch, but if you grab it in the same spot on every every single time you um, pick up a stitch, it's going to look more uniform and it's going to look better than if you did not. If you chose one way one time and the other the way the next time, it's going to look like you chose one way one time and the other way the next time. So we don't want it to look like that because we want it to look as beautiful as it can be.
So I haven't done this two stitch I cord on the top of a shoulder before. So I thought I would give it a try. Oh, I keep sticking my needle into little extra pieces of yarn. All right, so my next one is right here, that bar. And then I go back to this bar and trying not to split any yarns. Do that and then take that little double point and then go knit one and then do my SSK. Slip one as if to knit, slip another as if to knit and then knit those two stitches through the back loop. You can see it's starting to form already. So I'm gonna grab another bar and then I go back. See, I can tell this one right here is where I grabbed already. So I just go to the next stitch next to it. And like I said, I'm grabbing two bars, but I wanna be careful not to split any yarns because whenever you split yarns, it can lead to an unsightly looking little mess. <laughs> <laughs> really um, anyway we don't want it to look like that and I if I like this two stitch I cord I might just take oops oops oh I almost forgot my SSK slip as if to knit slip as if to knit hold those two stitches in the front with my left hand needle and knit them with my right hand needle grab another stitch and we just do this all the way across your work and you could see it is very much as easy as doing regular I cord. So anytime you have to seam shoulders, now you have another tool in your toolbox to be able to do shoulders that are stable and sturdy. And Elizabeth Zimmerman taught us to do this. Isn't that awesome? This is another reason to do that baby surprise jacket, <laughs> especially if you have little loved ones that are gonna have babies pretty soon. You can make them this iconic little sweater. And I don't know, I think it's just very cool. Very vintagey looking and very sweet. So here I am picking up that double point again. And then we're gonna slip a zip to knit, slip a zip to knit, hold those stitches in the front with my left hand needle and knit that through the back loop. Oh boy, do you see how I have a little knot in there? If you should get a knot in your work like that, we must take it out. You do not want not knots in your work. Don't try to pull it tighter, just remove it. And sometimes you will find, I don't know if you guys have ever found this, but when there's a knot, it's actually a piece of yarn that is broken. <laughs> that is not cool at all. We don't like that because then our it can create a hole in our lovely little sweater that we meant we spent many hours oops making. And we don't want that to happen. There we go. You didn't have to snip it. Nope, I didn't have to snip it. Uh, patience goes a long way with these things. You just have to be very patient and willing to fiddle around with it for a second. There's my other stitch. See how I grabbed one from the front and one from the back? And then I'll show you, it should be, we have slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, hold those in the front, and then knit it through the back loop. And then I'll be casting on another one. But look at how this one is flatter. So which one do you like, two or the three? I think I like the two stitch I cord because it looks flatter. That's and dumb. what do you guys think you like? Do you like the two stitch I cord or the three stitch I cord? The three stitch I cord is very visible. It's very visible. But this one is, I don't know. I kind of like it. I think I might be using it for other um, sweaters when I need to seam the edges. This might even be a good one for the Jones sweater. You know how the Jones sweater, you have to seam the two edges together? This one might make a really cute edge. I mean, I think it's, I think the I-cord um, is cuter than um, the three needle bind off. Kathy has a comment. She said she's been wanting to make this sweater and now she's motivated to start it. Oh my goodness. It's awesome. Okay, Kathy, don't forget what I said. You need to read the whole pattern and look at all the pages if you're going to knit it. Just so you um, 
don't miss anything because when I first did mine, I, I, you know, I tend to go 50 miles an hour and get started. And then I had to start over because I messed it up because I didn't see that little bit of instruction down in the bottom that said, when you get to five ridges, you need to increase eight stitches evenly across. I'm like, huh? <laughs> oh no. Great. You know, that's so like me to horse around, try to get it done like my pants are on fire and then <laughs> miss something. <laughs> Luckily, when I miss something and I have to re-knit it, I don't mind because you know what I tell myself? It's free knitting. I get to use the lovely yarn twice and it didn't cost anything. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jim? Mm -hmm. So I don't actually, Jim's like, are you tearing that out? I'm like, yes, I am tearing it out. I'm starting it over. Why? And he says, why? It looks nice. No, because it's not exactly the way I want it. I want it to be perfect. So anything is not right up to snuff. I just rip out and start over, huh, honey? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I think sometimes I probably frustrate Jim. <laughs> <laughs> He's going, oh my, you are spending way too much time on that. But look at, isn't that cool? See the front, how nice it looks right here? And let's look at the back. This is so cool. Okay, I just decided the two stitch I cord is definitely where it's at. Isn't that awesome? I'm totally doing that. I got to take this side out and then redo it. So let me just take my little... Um, double pointed needle and put it in here so it doesn't fall off there yippee okay so if you guys haven't seen this applied eye cord for when you need to seam your shoulders it doesn't matter if it's a cast on edge or if it's the bind off edge or if it's the salvage edge it doesn't really matter you can put them together you just have to count up how many little stitches you're going to have and make sure everything lines up nice and use these nice little locking stitch markers that we had and like i had on mine and um don't take my eye cord off honey if you take my eye cord off i will not be happy because it i'm doing so good so these are the little lockings. These are my favorite, but we have the light bulb ones that are the metal ones too. But I, I had learned on these little plastic ones and they're fantastic. And we have them at Alpaca Direct. You can find them on there. So let's look and see who, Jim, could I see who the winner is for this week? Yes, let's do that. Oh, Marion Hooks. Marion Hooks, guess what you won? You won some nickel. And this is the Brights colorway. And I don't know if that's the name of it, but it sure is pretty. And you can make something for baby or it? um, it's color number 87. It's pretty. It's very pretty. So all you have to do, Miriam, is get in touch with us at customer service and give us your shipping address and we'll get it in the mail to you right away. And you can try it and see how you like it. That's why I love giving prizes too, because I want you guys to try this yarn because every single yarn on Alpaca Direct, I have tried before I bring it in. If I don't like it, I don't bring it in. And I put it through the ringer. I'll put it, you know, if it says it's machine washable, I throw it in the washing machine. I do all the different things and it can be something so simple as uh, a yarn doesn't make it because it is too hard to wind. We've had some yarn before that was too hard to wind and um, we, didn't, we didn't keep it. So this is our prize for this week. It's called Simplicity Spray in oh, girly nice. colorway and pebble. The gray color is pebble and it's what I used on that, the baby sweater that I'm doing. So I'm so excited about that. And for next week, I thought we could do a little Valentine's project. It's called Knit the Love by Martina Bem. And she's the one that made that lovely hitchhiker pattern that we love so much. And um, I thought we could do this little shawl that she has and it has hearts on the edge and it takes just one skein and I'm sure it's sock yarn. Yep, it's fingering. So any sock yarn would do. And I'll probably find a red for mine because it has hearts on it. <laughs> so that'll be great. So I hope that you guys learned a little something today. 
Um, don't forget on when you're doing your buttons for these sweaters that the um, buttons, if you have the buttonhole on the right hand side, it's for a girl. On the left hand side, it's for a boy. And mine is boy colors with girl buttons because <laughs> she wanted it universal. So here she's got it. <laughs> and maybe that's a little too picky because they don't really say that on the uh, baby surprise jacket. But you know what? It could be a little picky. Most moms aren't going to know whether it's on the right or the left. It's not going to matter. It was a oh, question if the also, stripes are hard to get lined up like that. It was hard to do the stripes, so the stripes are even. You know, hold no, the stripes are, um, you can do it in any combination that you want. I just did it however I felt like. Like, I'm ready to change colors and change color. And um, this yarn kind of subtly stripes for you. And then these abrupt color changes, instead of knitting on the outside of the ball of yarn, this has an outside strand and the inside strand. And what I did, I was knit around for a while on the outside strand. Then I would cut that one off and knit from the inside strand and it would give me abrupt color changes. So it was fantastic. It worked great. I mean, I thought of that after I had been knitting for a little while, but you might do it sooner now that I gave you the idea. <laughs> also, I forgot this little tiny piece of paper before I go. Um, this is just a piece of binder paper. And um, if you wanted to in your sweater, you could take a strip of binder paper um, for whatever length your sweater is. Now, it's not doesn't work on this one, and I use six buttonholes, but if you wanted, most sweaters to have a standard of five buttonholes. So if you wanted to take a piece of paper and you wanted to know um, you exactly where to place your buttons, you could take a piece of binder paper and fold it in half, and then fold it in half, and then when you get done, you have evenly spaced buttonholes, one, two, three, four, and five. So on the baby surprise jacket, it does tell you to use five buttonholes. So you could use this method. Um, you could take a piece of binder paper that's the exact length of your sweater and cut it to that length and then just fold it in the half and then fold it again and you get exactly your five buttonholes. That's an easy way. And then you would take these fancy dancy little stitch markers, the locking stitch markers, and mark each position. And then you would be able to easily line up your buttonholes. And um, if you're doing the yarn over knit two together, you'll know exactly when to do a yarn over knit two together. Just a thought. I saw that online and I thought that was pretty neat. So I wanted to share that with you too. So I hope that you guys have a great week and come back with me next Tuesday because we're going to be talking about this um, Knit Your Love Shawl by Martina Bem. You take care. Have